Hello, one and all, and welcome back to another edition of the DVD Shelf Top Spots, the countdown show where we feel cinema should be celebrated, not incinerated. I'm your host, Andy Snyder, and today's top spots revolve around one of my favorite martial arts superstars. So let's take a look at my top 10 Jet Li movies. Decades ago, I barely had an inkling about martial arts movies. To me, movies like Kickbox or Mortal Kombat were as good as it got. And then I saw Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and The Matrix, and I knew there was more out there. And so I began blind buying various martial arts movies, many of which featured Jet Li. And while I loved Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee, it was Jet Li that I found to be the most entertaining, making him my favorite martial artist, with some of his films being my favorite martial arts movies for a very long time. Even though some of his movies have since been dethroned as my favorites with the amazing Raid and Eatmon series creeping towards the top, they still stand as some great pieces of fisticuffs fun. Before I get started on the list, I do want to clarify that I am not counting any movies in which Jet Li had a supporting or cameo role. This is just for films in which Jet Li was the lead or co-lead. Now let's get into the top spots. Kicking us off at number 10 is Born to Defense. This 1986 film follows Jet Li's World War II soldier, also named Jet, as he and his comrades return after the war is won. However, the Chinese soldiers are swept aside quite literally in favor of American Navy sailors, who are loud, brash, and hostile towards the native Chinese population. At every turn, Jet witnesses the sailors abusing their influence, getting away with any and all crimes, including murder. Fed up with the treatment, he takes a stand, fighting back against a quartet of especially aggressive sailors led by the menacing Captain Hans. Not only was this Jet Li's fourth film role ever, it was the first and only time he directed a film. This is also one of the darkest and most bleak of his films that I've seen. I mean, Jet Li is typically more serious and intense than someone like Jackie Chan, but even this felt a bit dark and depressing for Li. It may have its flaws, including some of the abysmal overdubbing of the English-speaking actors, but it still has some solid fights and is better than I think some fans give it credit for. It just isn't quite your typical Jet Li fare. Next up at number 9 is Tai Chi Master. Released in 1993 and sometimes known in the US as Twin Warriors, this martial arts dramedy directed by Yu Mu Ping follows Jun Bao and Chin Bo to troublemaking Shaolin monks as they are expelled from the temple. As these best friends try to adapt to the real world, they are thrust into a conflict between the corrupt local imperial forces and the rebels trying to defeat them. The power-hungry and immoral Chin Bo sides with the imperial forces, quickly rising in the ranks with a ruthless determination. Meanwhile, Jun Bao leads a simple life with the rebels. As the divide between them widens, they are forced to go head-to-head. -head culminating in a showdown between the two former monks. Despite some of the violence, death, and dark moments contained within, this is easily the most lighthearted and comedic of the Jet Li films on this list, in addition to one of the more over-the-top, containing some truly unique fights, including one where Jet Li only uses his head to strike his opponents, and one where co-star Michelle Yao uses table legs as makeshift stilts because she can. This may be a bit too goofy and wire-heavy for some people, but I find it to be a fun movie, loaded with action, and with a heavier comedic presence from Jet Li than you might be used to. Up next at number 8 is 2001's Kiss of the Dragon. This movie finds Jet Li's Chinese intelligence agent Liu in France to assist the local authorities with the apprehension of a Chinese mob boss. However, the corrupt Inspector Richard, who is leading the investigation, kills the mob boss and frames Liu, sending him on the run with Bridget Fonda's Jessica, a woman forced into prostitution by Richard, who is the only person that can clear Liu's name and help him take down Inspector Richard once and for all. Kiss of the Dragon includes numerous fun fight scenes featuring the speed and hard hits that Lee's known for, with the true standout being the clash between Lee and French stuntman and martial artist Ciro Raffaelli, who co-starred in the District B-13 films. I think the beauty of this film lies in the grounded and more realistic choreography, keeping the wire work and CGI enhancement to a drastic minimum, only using it either for the safety of a stunt or to allow emotion to be filmed more coherently. It may have its flaws, but this fun action thriller still ranks amongst my favorite Jet Li flicks. 
And at number seven is the Shaolin Temple. The film finds Jet Li's J.E. Yuan a prisoner along with his father. However, Yuan and his father fight back against the evil general, with the father sacrificing himself so that his injured son can escape. Yuan is taken in by a Shaolin temple where he decides to become a monk so that he can learn their martial arts and avenge the death of his father. Even though the Buddhist code forbids his aggressive intentions, Yuan ignores their teachings, going after the general and making the temple a target, resulting in a climactic clash between the monks and the army. This 1982 film is the debut for Jet Li, filmed sometime during his late teens. And even though this didn't age all that well in some areas, and some will definitely be turned off by the simulated animal violence in a couple of scenes, this is surprisingly well made. Sure, it shows its age, and my old overseas version has some janky subtitles, but it has a tried and true revenge story and solid martial arts contained within. Adding in the fact that this was Jet Li's debut, and I think that any fan of his would be remiss not to check it out. In at number 6 is 2005's Unleashed, released in some places as Danny the Dog. Unleashed follows Danny, the secret weapon of the vicious loan shark Bart who raised and treats Danny like a dog, collar and all. Following an accident, the injured Danny stumbles upon blind piano tuner Sam who takes him in and with the help of his daughter they teach him how to live life. When Bart finds out his dog is still alive, he pulls out all the stops to bring him back, forcing Danny to take on his former master to keep his newfound family safe. This film leaned heavily on storytelling and dramatic acting, pulling in greats Morgan Freeman and Bob Hoskins and also giving Jet Li more dramatic material to work with than usual. But when it comes time to kick ass, Li is in top form, delivering multiple exhilarating fights throughout, making this his best English language starring role in my opinion. And at number 5 is 1991's Once Upon a Time in China. The plot follows legendary martial arts folk hero Wong Fei Hung as he tries to adapt in an increasingly westernized China as foreigners continually pour in, some with the intent to exploit the Chinese people. When he crosses paths with an aggressive Chinese gang taking advantage of the weak, Fei Hung and his pupils are set on a collision course with the dominating foreign powers and a rival martial arts master looking to make a name for himself. This film, which is but one of over 120 about this iconic historical figure, is arguably the film to put Jet Li on the map as a martial arts superstar. Even though some production elements haven't aged as well, such as the overdubbing of English-speaking characters, this is pure martial arts mastery, giving us some great martial arts action and a mostly engaging story. Right on its heels, at number 4 is the direct sequel, Once Upon a Time in China 2. This entry in the series finds Wang Fei Hung traveling to Canton with his westernized Ant 13 and his apprentice Liang Fun in order to attend a conference on medicine and give a lecture on acupuncture. They soon discover that the region is being terrorized by the White Lotus Sect, an extremist group intent on killing or destroying everyone and everything not Chinese. Meanwhile, Fei Hung befriends a doctor who is secretly part of a rebellion looking to overthrow the imperial dynasty that ruled China at the time to establish a republic in its place. Now Fei Hung must deal with the White Lotus while keeping the doctor safe and out of the clutches of the imperial commander Lan. Even though I think the first film of the series is a classic, I actually prefer this one. Barely. The X factor that nudges this one over the edge is the inclusion of Donnie Yen as antagonist Commander Lan, giving us not one, but two clashes with Jet Li. It may be over the top, and the comedy definitely feels a bit sillier at times, but this is another great tale about Wong Fei Hung, and in my opinion, this is Jet Li's greatest outing as the martial arts folk hero. And for those of you curious, Jet Li did indeed play the role again in Once Upon a Time in China 3, and then the sixth film in the series, Once Upon a Time in China and America. While they have their merits, they are definitely inferior to the first two films of the series. And at number three is Fearless. Released in 2006, this film follows legendary martial arts folk hero Huo Yun Jia as he goes from being a selfish and aggressive fighter to the folk hero who stood up for the Chinese people in a time when they were being stepped on by the boot of colonization. Contained within the film are bone-crunching fights, impressive choreography against a variety of opponents, and an engaging story, making this one of Jet Li's best and definitely his last great martial arts film. 
If you seek out the film, I strongly recommend watching the longer director's cut, not to be confused with the unrated cut. The director's cut not only adds about 35 minutes, it rearranges existing scenes to give a more balanced viewing experience in my opinion. Now for a more detailed look at this film, be sure to check out my Huo Yun Job triple feature on the DVD shelf for Flicks. Next up at number 2 is 2002's Hero, released in the US in 2004. This martial arts drama, directed and co-written by Zhang Yi Mao, is not only the most aesthetically unique and beautiful film on this list, utilizing magnificent color schemes and stunning visuals, it also has an atypical storytelling structure. Unlike almost every other film on this list, which mostly tells the story from point A to B, with a few flashbacks, this starts towards the end of the story, providing a variety of flashbacks depicting how Jet Li's nameless protagonist came to be in front of the Emperor. However, taking a cue from Akira Kurosawa's classic Rashomon, the flashbacks are provided with different degrees of truth. But I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just leave it at that. The martial arts action is also quite different compared to other films on this list, with exaggerated and beautiful wire foo, sometimes feeling like a mix of ballet and martial arts. All of these elements make this one of Jet Li's best and most unique films. Now, as a side note, because I've heard this way more times than I can remember at this point, no, Quentin Tarantino did not make this movie, nor was he involved in the production in any way. It was advertised as Quentin Tarantino Presents because 1. He helped facilitate Hero's stateside release, and 2. His name recognition equals asses in seats. But that doesn't mean he wrote, or directed it, or even produced it, so stop thinking he did. Coming in at number one is 1994's Fist of Legend. This remake of Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury follows Chen Zhen, one of the favorite pupils under the legendary Huo Yun Jia. When his master dies, Zhen returns home to pay his respects, but he quickly determines that Yun Jia's death was no accident and seeks to make those responsible pay. Even though this is considered a remake, it really is more of a reimagining, containing drastically different plot points and characters, including Chen Zhen, with Jet Li's version being a completely different type of character than Bruce Lee's. For those sharp-eared viewers out there, you might have already picked up on the name of his master, Guo Yun Jia, a historical martial arts icon who Jet Li went on to play in Fearless. And just like that film, for a more detailed look at Fist of Legend and the aforementioned Fist of Fury, be sure to check out the Huo Yun Jia triple feature on the DVD shelf for Flix. Suffice it to say that this is Jet Li at his best, containing some memorable and well-crafted fight scenes in addition to a more well-rounded story than the original film. Well, that'll do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the list, and be sure to keep an eye out for more in the future. With a constantly changing cinema landscape and the tides of my opinion in perpetual flux, this is not meant to be an end-all be-all list, but rather a good idea of some of my favorite Jet Li movies. And if you ask me again tomorrow, I might give you a slightly different list. But for today, these are the top spots.